Hello and welcome. In this video I'm going to be talking about filter factories. We're going to start with something very simple and then we'll keep adding and modifying it to you know meet more and more capabilities and end up with something very advanced. So let's get started. So a filter factory is pretty simple. We have ourselves a crafter and it's attached to a repeater torch clock. We have an output which we monitor that can hold the clock and we have some inputs that we monitor that can hold the clock so that if the craft is not running the hoppers become blocked and that stops their filter items running out so this is the first layer as you can see we just have some droppers each dropper has an item in it with some hoppers above it compared us out of these into blocks with dust in the middle for our repeater clock and this is tileable we can put these right next to each other the second layer just simply completes the filter so that when the input strength of these hoppers gets up to three, we then move the item from this dropper up into this hopper, which will then let the clock run. So I do not believe I have this one set up, but over here we have one set up for, let's see, oh, this would be repeaters. So if I go through here and I top up each of the inputs so that we have as if stone and all that had come in, we can see that we start crafting our repeaters. And then eventually it will stop because the inputs will drop down below a signal strength of three, which we just had for stone there, which then holds the clock and stops the crafting, meaning we don't run out of stone. Now we've showed how to construct it in terms of items. We've just got some non-stackable filter items here in the lower hoppers to prevent that running out into here. And then we just have our filter hoppers set up fairly standard up the top. Now when you're setting up your ingredients, it is important to remember that that torch is going to block that hopper half the time. So whatever item comes in the least should be there. Um, and then these two should run pretty much full time. They should not become blocked. So that's why stones over here. And this design should count for most recipes that take three items as input and produce something. However, we are limited in terms of how long we can make the clock. Um, we only have two repeaters, we have a torch, that means we've got nine ticks of clock worth to play with, which gives us 18 ticks total um, between crafts, and that's not quite enough to fill the craft of certain recipes. So how do we make, you know, for recipes that take a longer clock? We need to get items in more quickly. Well, the good news is we can just simply put some solid blocks in front of our filters and stretch the whole thing out. So this is the same design, it's just that we've added a line of repeaters across here, one in front of the compounder watching the output, and two as part of the repeater clock. And this means that we can have a much longer clock and should be able to do much larger recipes. So in here we've got something for observers. So if I just top these up, should start running again, and we can see they can fill all the um, items for the observer between crafting hits. And we're not really even using the full extent of the clock here. The other advantage of this method is you can actually also double run some of the inputs. So for example, if we wanted to um, run this particular filter at double hopper speed, I could have a hopper go into the side and then this hopper point to the side of that hopper and essentially run the output of this hopper at double hopper speed. Ah, but I hear you say, not every recipe needs just three inputs. So what do we do for recipes up to five inputs? Well, if you look over my shoulder, you can already see the answer. So again, all we've done is stretch it. So as you can see, it's still the same compared clock as before. In fact, the middle three slices is almost identical. We've just moved the solid blocks out and had three dust in the middle instead of one. The only other change you have to keep in mind is you need a non-stackable item now in these droppers so that when these comparators run, they run at a signal strength of two, which allows the signal to get from here to here and stop the repeater clock. And that's it. That's four, five item inputs. So we have some rabbits two here, and we'll just get this one going to demonstrate it as well. Rabbits two is about equal, so I'm gonna to have to top up all of these. And we can see our rabbit's shoes now going. Now that's all the simple cases we can do, you know, 
crafting recipes that need a lot of one item or up to five items, let's get into some of the more interesting cases. Part of the reason I started this journey is I was trying to improve both my pumpkin pie crafter and my rocket crafter, and I wanted something to work together. So let's explore some of the ideas we found on that journey. So this design is useful for anything where you need to craft one of the items. So we have sugar and sugar comes from sugar cane and each sugar cane makes one sugar and we only need one sugar for pie. So it's a bit of an even recipe. So here's our sugar to recipe. Here's our pie crafter. And as you can see, it's exactly the same design we've seen before. It's just instead of a hopper here, we have a crafter. And this simply works because as the clock runs around, we alternate creating sugar or pies. So let's just top this one up as well. We can see it run. Eggs will run out first. As we can see, we create sugar. And that sugar comes in and tops up the sugar for the pie crafter. Now, of course, eggs don't last long, so that's run out already. But you get the general idea. And we can also extend this out. So in this case, we've got um, bows in order to make dispensers. Again, one bow is needed for one dispenser. And again, if we put the items in here, we're just taking the more than three item approach, stretching it out as we did before. And again, we craft and we used right away. Now, the only difference here between that one is obviously the torch isn't running this one because of the nature of only having an unstackable here. This has to fire within the same tick as this, so that that bow goes there before any of the hoppers tries to put something that isn't a bow there. That's simply achieved via this mechanism here. So as you can see, we've got a repeater on one tick and a comparator, and the comparator is now part of our hopper clock. What this does is it just makes sure that whenever the repeater clock fires, this side fires ever so slightly after that side. So first we craft the dispenser and then we craft the bow. And that's because within a tick, repeaters fire before comparators. Other than that, we're just following the same rules we've already discussed. You'll see that we have our non-stackables up here and here. But what if we're making a recipe where, you know, the other item isn't just one? You know, we need one bow for a dispenser, we need one sugar for a pie, but for a rocket, well, for a rocket we might only need one paper, but sugar cane makes three papers at a time. Let's have a look at how rockets work. So this is the des same design, but we've split the factory in two. So we still have a repeater clock over here, with our input holding the repeater clock. We still have our repeater clock over here as well, with our output overflow holding the repeater clock and our input holding the repeater clock. But what we've done is we've created a direct link. So we have this crafter putting paper into here and this hopper putting paper into here. If we have paper here, we let this go. So this turns off this signal and we've just got this at two. That two strength would not normally go here, but then it can't. If there's paper here, this lets us know when we've got enough paper. So this is acting like a paper filter, except we're not having it act as a filter because we always get paper from the other crafter. And then likewise, if we get paper here, if it backflows all the way up until this point, this will then run a signal to here and also hold the clock. So in effect, all we've done is we've removed the filter from here downwards and we've added another overflow protection upwards. The overflows come up, the filters come down, but it's the same principle as before. However, as we said at the start of this video, this is about attaching it to our factories. And what we produce for our factories might be used in multiple places. For example, if we create redstone dust, we need that for our torches, but we also need it for our repeaters and comparators. And those torches we produce are also needed for repeaters and comparators. So how do we share the output of one of our components across multiple other components? So in here we have some of the items we use that might come from a farm, the raw items that we might end up putting to make our redstone components. And we're just going to drop them in here. 
get them to going. And it filters along. As you can see, not everything was picked up. Some of it was overflow at the end. And that's because not everything could absorb it at the time. However, we are now producing sticks, which are then going into our torch factory, and our torches are then getting sent over to our repeaters and comparators. If we have a look down here, it's the same factory as we said before. This is the long format. Um, and that's just simply so that I can have solid blocks at the back of those comparators for the water to run along. But that's a fairly standard factory for creating repeaters and a standard one for comparators. All we've done is for the factories that produce items we reuse, so here is torches for example, instead of it putting it into a hopper and then watching the output, we just simply flow it into a water stream, which will then flow around again for filtering. Um, we're not watching the output of this because we're going to um, hold the clocks for these two ones that create sticks and redstone torches mm -hmm. at the back instead. So instead of the compound touch facing just this way to say whether or not it has the items to make torches, we're also going to face it in the other direction as well to say, hey, system, I need more sticks. It's not enough sticks. So if there's not enough sticks, we let go of this block, which lets go of that if there's enough bamboo. So if we put some more bamboo into the system, you can see the bamboo will come around and eventually release this again. This will start working and it says, hey, I don't need any more sticks for the moment. And now I do again. And that'll keep flapping back and forth, depending on whether the torch factory has enough. In the case of repeaters and comparators, we're doing the same thing. It's just simply that we're now running both signals to one of the you know, supposed inputs of the torch factory. Now this is all well and good for simple factories, but once we get you know further up, we're going to have multiple items, all of which you know might need other items within the system. So how do we expand this even further? That brings us to the last design. So we've now gone into the end, and again, it's exactly the same as before. We've just added a little bit of extra componentry to it. So we still have our stick factory using the same design we've always talked about. We still have our torch factory, same design, comparators and repeaters. We take the output of anything that might be needed in the system and we run it out the back into these pistons that either allow these observers to fire these lines or not. This then runs into a binary encoder. And by the way, this is not my design. This binary encoder then runs into the outputs of both our storage system and our factories. So that this will fire if we need a stick, this will fire if we need a torch, if we need a repeater, if we need a comparator, redstone dust, bamboo, stone, quartz, and we don't fetch these items from our storage system because they're manufactured. On the other side, our storage system is requesting items that can be produced if they're not full yet. And that's pretty much it. So you've already seen the factory side of this. We just have a hopper clock to periodically send a pulse on or off through these repeaters. It's four ticks when it's in front of an observer, one tick otherwise. Those one ticks are just to account for delays in the tracks going this way. Um, that means every four ticks, one of these observers will fire, barring gaps. That runs these lines. If there's an observer on top, so across the entire line, there's observers on the bottom. But if there's an observer on top, it'll delay the signal one extra. So you can sort of see as these fire, there's little like on off moments. So let's call them early and late. Well, we have a pattern here. And if you count from the orange line, which I'm calling the signal line, if you see the pattern over here, what we need is redstone dust. 
So we can see that redstone dust is signal line, observer, observer. We come to our output line, we'll see it's the same thing. Redstone dust is signal line, observer, observer. And the build is exactly the same for this section here. So for the input and the output, same build. You just have to run it from the signal line over. From there, we just need to make sure we keep the signal going because rails only transmit up to nine. Turn corners. And then once we've taken all of our inputs, we run it through this system. So one, two ticks for our data lines and one, two, three and a half ticks for our signal line. So our signal line was early. Now it's two and a half later than it was. Well, one and a half later than it was because it's two ticks for this, three and a half for that. Three and a half minus two is one and a half. So coming across here and early will come then late will come, and then half a tick later, that's what's happening with those um, trapdoors and scaffolding, the signal line comes along. So how does that work when do the determining the um, reading of the encoder? Again, not my design. Um, well, the signal line will fire this observer, that observer will fire that block, which will quasi connectivity fire the dropper, but not update it. It will be updated when this rail line is fired, but if an early signal isn't where it's supposed to be, it'll be pushed into the line of fire. So an early will become a late and hence fire half a tick before that fires, meaning that will already be on, that will not update and the uh, dropper will not see the observer fired. Or, alternatively, if a late signal isn't where it's supposed to be, it will end up on a short and fire again, preventing this observer firing. It only works if the late signals come in the late columns and are made extra late, or the early signals come in the early columns and are kept early. That's the only way the dropper gets to see this fired, and that's what makes sure that it decodes the binary signal correctly. Other than that, we're just using that signal to have droppers send the outputs to the water stream and have it come around once again. There are, of course, multiple ways of building binary encoders and decoders, and some of those options for building them are behind me, and this will be available in the world download. So that's it. Filter factories from simple to advanced. Hopefully in watching this, you'll find something that works together with your world and the level of complexity you're happy with and maybe make something interesting to attach to your farms. Thank you for watching.